All right. Good morning, everybody. Mike Courtney here coming to you on a beautiful uh, early summer Wednesday morning with my good friend and counterpart, Steve Parisi, president and CEO of IBC Global. Steve, good morning. How are you? Fantastic, my friend. How about yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good. good to we are going to talk today about what usually is a fairly complex topic in the insurance world. And we're going to try and oversimplify if we can and talk about some possible scenarios where planning, insur life insurance planning with qualified dollars yeah. can work. You know, we're, 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 we come across high net worth, um, well-established clients who have significant amounts of money sitting in some kind of qualified plan, whether it's a, an IRA or a 401k or um, what have you. And they're trying to figure out how to maximize their tax position, how to maximize insurance funding, how to you know maybe supercharge those qualified dollars and diversify if possible. Um, so is this some an area where you've had some success and you've been able to work out some some business? Uh, yes, definitely on the business piece. I mean, the question that always comes up is, can I transfer my qualified money, which is money in the IRA, a 401k, wherever, a tax deferred account, can I transfer that to a whole life insurance policy without any tax? And the short answer to that is no, because right. what you're doing, you're transferring money from a qualified asset. If you're not familiar with that, a 401k is the best example. It's money that, or it's an account that you have funded with pre-tax dollars. So what I like to say to someone that is not around money all the time, I don't want to assume they understand that, is if you earn $100,000 per year, you contribute $10,000 of your income to that 401k, what happened is your taxable income, instead of 100, dropped down to 90,000. You're able to deduct that $10,000 contribution from your income. So you saved the taxes up front and pumped it into the 401k. So you haven't paid any tax on what you've paid in. And then also the growth. As it grows, you don't pay any tax on it. So that's the benefit to the qualified account. It can grow tax deferred. But then why we get this question is, hey, I'm going to have to pay all this tax on it now when it comes, comes time to use the money. Can I transfer it to this tax-free account, i.e. the life insurance policy? And the answer is no. The IRS says no. You cannot directly transfer a qualified asset to a non-qualified asset. The tax does need to be paid. Any right. So on that, I yeah. Through so it. yeah. The, in that example, and you know, just to like slow it down for anybody who's trying to follow along, then when it comes time to access that four hundred one k, you've got to be a certain age to avoid penalties. So this is really an account that is primarily and specifically designed to fund your retirement. Correct. So I'm going to get to be over the age of what before I can access? 59 and a half. That's the golden age. Over 59 and a half. I can start to access those funds. And when I start to pull money out of the 401k, it's going to be taxed at that time. Correct. At whatever and my ordinary income tax rate is at that time. Correct. Correct. Taxed as income in addition to any other income you might have. Right. So, so yeah. folks will try and figure out a way to say, can I take some portion of this? And and I might maybe they might not they might not need it, right? You know, obviously they might not need it at 59 and a half, but they might say, we want to put this away into something that's going to continue to grow. But yeah. that's not always uh the planning doesn't exactly allow for that specific scenario. No, no, it doesn't. And, and I mean when when it comes to moving money from a, an old 401k or IRA to a life insurance policy. The cash value sometimes can be a goal. It often is because it's a safe area. You can position money. The tax benefits are great. But from a, a legacy standpoint, passing money to the next generation, it becomes very appealing because if I leave my heirs uh, an IRA, they're going to have to pay income tax on that. I mean, in addition to whatever their income is. So, I mean, they're going to get hit pretty hard right. versus a life insurance policy. It's income tax free. And you can be creative when you're planning. Say, okay, I've got assets, 
in stocks, bonds, mutual funds. I've got some in a 401k. I've got real estate. I've got life insurance. How much life insurance should I have in order to be able to spend the other money effectively or spend it without having to worry about running out and still leave the amount I'd like to to the next generation? Really, you're insuring your net worth, if you want to use that term, with the death benefit there. So you can be really creative as far as how you plan when you're looking at passing money to the next generation. But I'm kind of going off on a rant here. When you look at the qualified account, using that to pay the next generation or leave money leave money behind is one of the least efficient strategies because a big, big bite's going to come out to taxes. Does that make sense? Yep. What about, um, what about, you know, take that that example of 401k or, or, you know, any kind of qualified dollars, IRA. What about rolling that into a self-directed IRA? Does that, I know that gives you more flexibility with um, what kind of investment choices you can make inside yeah. the IRA. Does that open up the box at all with regards to life insurance? Um, not a whole lot. I have seen it done. We don't do that. But there there is a firm that we used to work with a bit where they would do exactly that. They would have individuals transfer qualified funds to a self-directed IRA. And then in that IRA, they're opening a life insurance policy within the IRA. Right. So then you can make investments under that IRA on, umbrella. So you're still, everything's still tax deferred and you've got a bit of control. But if you ever want to get the money out of the IRA, so if you want to pull income out to spend for whatever you want to spend that's not in the tax qualified status, you still have to take that distribution. So you're always going to run into that same situation where tax is going to, to be due, like when you're pulling money from the qualified account. Yeah. I And just a disclaimer, I remember years ago, the firm that I was working for had a client who had that kind of scenario, um, had a self-directed IRA, had a bunch of di real diverse asset mix inside the IRA. And um, when it came to unwind everything, just to clarify your point that you were talking about, it, very complicated. Yeah. Um, he spent a lot of money working with his um, lawyers and his CPA uh, to just to try to make sure they, they were getting everything just right. And you, you have to be real careful. That's the other thing. Like You, you can have a, a big headache with it and just so much time and, and money. The headache might invest. be 20 years from now when you're like, why did yeah. I do this? Yeah, which isn't worth it. Here's what a lot of people do. And then here's also what we'll do from a planning st standpoint. The question is, can I transfer money without taxes? No, you can't do that. So what can I do? Or what do other people do specifically when it comes to taking qualified funds and moving that, taking it out, moving it into a life insurance policy? Here's what individuals would do. If I've got 500,000 in a qualified account, if I take the full 500,000 out in one year, what's going to happen? At taxes on the taxes, full 500. Probably penalties. Correct. Depending on my age. But yes, let's assume okay. that individual is over 60. So you don't right. have the penalty issue. So if I take the full 500 out, that's in addition to whatever my, my earned income is for that year too, or my income. So I'm probably going to be in the highest tax bracket or very close to that. So I take out 500, I walk away with call it 250 to 300 net. That's the ouch. Like how do I prevent losing so much? You're going to pay taxes. But what you could look at is instead of taking it out in one shot, is perhaps you distribute it over five years, 100K per year, or maybe it's over 10 years, 50K per year, plus the interest. I know it's going to grow too. But by taking out a lesser amount, what you're paying tax on is the amount you take out each year. So what we'll do with individuals is look at when we take, when we take money out of that qualified account based on your tax bracket, Here's an estimate of how much might go to taxes. And then here's what you're left over with. So if I'm going to take out 100K per year, and let's assume 25,000 is going to be due in taxes, there's two ways I can approach that. One, the 100K I distribute, I can set aside 25,000 from that 100, and I've got 75 left over. So now I can work with the 75, and the other 25 went to the IRS. Does that, that part make sense? Yep. Or depending on my situation, I can take out the hundred 
And then if I say, hey, I can cover the 25K from other income or I've got assets, I'll deal with that. Um, my CPA and I are, are planning that. Okay, that's fine too. But the 25K in taxes, like that will be due when I take that distribution from the qualified account. Like I can't work around that. Um, and again, I'm not a CPA or tax attorney, so just full disclaimer there, <laughs> we're, we're not. Anytime we look at these plans, what I'll do is just put a, a quick Excel sheet together, allow them to the, the client to be able to change the tax bracket there, show them how to use it, but then have a conversation and let them know explicitly, like this is not tax advice. Before we do this, definitely, definitely, let's connect with your CPA. Let's go over everything and get the formal numbers or you can do that. That way, everybody's covered and we can get accurate numbers. But again, we just want to provide a ballpark to give them an idea of what other people are doing when it comes to taking money from qualified accounts and moving it into to our non-qualified accounts. And basically, the gist of that was like, just make sure that as you're withdrawing money, you're setting aside dollars to pay the tax. Correct. Then, yeah. What, what that withdrawal liability is going to look like. Correct. Correct. So when we model that out, we just had a case where someone had about 500000 in qualified money. He was interested in moving that into a life insurance policy. He didn't need the money. He does well. He's still in, in the game of business. He's doing a lot of stuff. Um, but he said, all right, if I move it over, like how much ballpark am I going to have to pay in taxes? Here's my income. What we looked at were different strategies. Here's what it looks like if you take it all out in one shot. Based on your tax bracket, here's the amount that you're going to have to pay in taxes. If you spread it out over five years, based on your current income, here's the tax rate. Here's what you have to pay in taxes. Here's what's what's left over to fund the life insurance policy. Here it is over seven years. Just to give some options so we can see, okay, I've got to pay the tax. I'm aware of that. Which option am I more comfortable comfortable with? Spreading it out? because I see that I spent, I pay a little bit less in taxes because I don't bump myself up to the next tax bracket. That's great. But then the other thing to consider is, okay, if I take it out faster, yes, I've got to pay more taxes, but then what can I do with the money in the meantime to generate more money? And will that put me ahead? Meaning will I make up for the money I lost in paying taxes by taking more up front? If that made sense. Yeah. 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 What, I'm surprised that you don't see more of the self-directed IRA business. Um, we don't we don't deal with it. Like that's not something we do, at least not right now. That's why. I know the firm that we had had worked with, we helped them specifically with designing the policies for maximum cash value and helping on the service side of things. They would do a lot of the the self-directed IRA strategies. So that's where I saw it uh, saw it occur a lot. But it's not it's not our our area of expertise. And my big thing with business is we want to focus on what we're very very good at because that's where we can serve clients at the highest level. So when something comes up that we're not good at, I'll let someone know that up front. Like this is not our area of expertise. Here's where we can help. You can a elect not to work with us if you're not comfortable. That's okay. Or b we can pull someone else in who's an expert in this other area where you're looking for help. And most, and with those designs, most of the area where you feel like you can run into a little bit of trouble or at least a lot more complexity is when it comes time to access funds or yeah. exit strategies. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And I know, mean, there's upfront, there's upfront um, hoops that have to be jumped through in a correct way, but it's more kind of boilerplate upfront. Yeah, it's always on the, the back end. And, and that's that's why a, a lot of times when we work with individuals, they say, you know what, I see what I'm going to have to pay in tax. I'd rather get it over with faster, unless it's just a, a foolish idea to do it one year because I'll pay way too much. Let me try and do it over three or four years because I'm, I'm comfortable with that. But I want control of the money. Like I don't want it to be tax deferred. I don't have to deal with these complex or extra tax issues. When I pull the money out, I just want it clean, simple. So I have to think about it and still be able to access my money when I want. Like that's that's what people are often looking for, including myself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Keep it easy, so man. If anybody wants to take a deeper dive on this concept or anything else that Steve or I have talked about over the years, feel free to reach out. 
I'm Mike Courtney. This is Steve Parisi. We're here to help, and we love talking about cases like this and uh, any kind of scenarios that you have going on uh, where where we can be where we can be of assistance. Uh, Steve, thanks for your time today, and Likewise. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, my friend. Thanks so much. See you.